it will be talking about increased nuchal translucency as part of a new prenatal genetics series. So nuchal translucency is measured as the fluid that is seen on the back of the baby's neck on first trimester ultrasound, which is usually done around 11 to 14 weeks gestational age. And this is part of the first trimester prenatal screening, which also, invo which also involves some blood work, such as beta HCG and PAP A. You can see on the right here some pictures of baby. So this is baby's head and chest. We can see the nuchal translucency, which is the uh, essentially how transparent the back of the neck is here. And here is a normal nuchal translucency. In this baby down here, we can see that the nuchal translucency is increased. And so this would be um, an example of increased nuchal translucency. So it's technically defined as a nuchal translucency greater than the 95th percentile. And this fluid um, that we can see can be limited to the neck here, or actually in some cases you can see swelling around the entire baby as well. Um, the fluid collection can be septate or non-septate. In this case, these examples are um, non-septated, but occasionally you can see um, almost like divisions within the back of the neck. So some clinical associations with increased NT, there's in particular an increased risk of chromosomal defects, um, as well as fetal death and some major fetal anomalies. Um, however, uh, depending on how thick the NT is, it may self-resolve on its own. Some chromosomal defects that are commonly associated with increased NT include Turner syndrome, so 45XO, trisomy 13, trisomy 18, and trisomy 21. This can be uh, isolated or it can be found with other ultrasound anomalies, for example, cardiac defects, diaphragmatic hernias, and a large bladder are all found sometimes in association with increased NT. And these fetal anomalies can also be part of a syndrome like, for example, Noonan syndrome, skeletal dysplasia such as achondroplasia. Okay, so this is uh, an important table to be familiar with. And what it's showing essentially is that the prevalence of chromosomal defects here in this first column increases exponentially with the NT thickness. So this is the nuchal translucency. This first row is just showing normal. So in a normal baby, your risk of a chromosomal defect is 0.2%. The risk of fetal death is 1.3%, and the risk of a fetal anomaly is 1.6%. So with a normal nuchal translucency, the chance for your baby of being alive and well is about 97%. So we compare that to nuchal translucencies that are slightly above the 95th percentile, so 95th to 99th percentile, we can see that the risk of chromosomal defects increases. See this here from 0 0.2 to 3.7. However, the risk of fetal death stays essentially the same. Um, and so we can see that there's a slightly increased risk of some kind of anomaly and a decreased risk of baby being alive and well. And as the nuchal translucency gets larger and larger, the risk of a chromosomal defect goes up and up. And in particular, the chromosomal defects that they're referring to here, um, half of the time, this is gonna be trisomy 21. This is the most common chromosomal aneuploidy. And about 25% of these cases have either trisomy 18 or 13, and 10% have Turner syndrome. So we talked about some of the risks to the fetus, such as the risk of fetal death. Um, I also want to point out that when the doctor, if the doctor were to tell you that you have increased nuchal translucency, about 80% of these 
in 80% of cases, you'd have a what's called a minor increase in nuchal translucent th C thickness between the 95th and the 99th percentile. So again, that's associated with only a small increase in risk of a chromosomal anomaly. And just for your knowledge, most fetuses that pass away will do so before about 20 weeks gestation. And oftentimes they show progression of their nuchal translucency to involve swelling of the entire baby, which I mentioned earlier. And this is known as high drops. Okay, so why do babies get increased nuchal translucency? Well, we don't really know. Some people think it can be due to abnormal lymphatic vessels or an abnormal extracellular matrix protein, such as collagen, which are commonly found in some of these um, conditions that are associated with increased NT. Follow-up testing for increased nuchal translucency. This will include a early second trimester ultrasound with maternal fetal medicine for the high-risk OB specialists around 16 weeks. So nor normally you get your second trimester ultrasound around 20 weeks, so it's about a month early. Um, this is also the earliest time that you can get an amniocentesis, is about 16 weeks. So if they find something that's concerning on this early ultrasound and you want to proceed with amniocentesis to do some genetic testing on baby, it's definitely something that you can do. Usually you want to do amniocentesis. Um, actually, you can do it at any time. But if you do it after 24 weeks, you might have to do it in the labor and delivery suite because there's a risk for inducing labor. Now, this second trimester ultrasound, the reason we do, we repeat it is because we can actually get a better picture of baby and their anatomy compared to the first trimester ultrasound. And this is because baby's larger and more of their structures are formed. So it's easier to see if there's anything wrong. Now, in the situation where the nuchal translucency was borderline elevated and the 16-week ultrasound shows no significant anomalies. What you can do is consider deferring the decision for an amniocentesis until the 20-week ultrasound. Because remember, many of those cases, the majority of cases that are borderline high for nuchal translucency and then don't have anomalies, other anomalies detected, are going to be normal pregnancies. That's about the 93%. Um, again, this is a personal decision, so some patients who really would just like to know may elect to move forward with this amniocentesis at 16 weeks, um, but again, this is a personal decision. So thanks for watching. If you found this video useful, please like the video and subscribe to this channel. That really helps me out. You can also support more videos like this by joining my Patreon. Thanks.